Prime Minister and I have just concluded a very useful and a wide-ranging discussion of some of the most crucial issues that are facing the people of Canada and the United States and indeed facing people everywhere. Prime Minister Trudeau briefed me on his recent discussions with leaders in Europe and Asia on his concerns for world peace and disarmament and improving the East-West dialogue. We fully share the concerns for peace which the Prime Minister has expressed. We appreciate his strong statements supporting the joint efforts of the Western allies to negotiate meaningful arms reductions and to promote dialogue with other nations. And I thank you, Mr. Prime Minister, for coming here, sharing your ideas with us, and we wish you Godspeed in your efforts to help build a durable peace. Well, as, just, as you have just heard, the uh, President supported what is being known as my peace initiative, but uh, I think he did more than support it. I think he has been showing through his administration in the past months at least that uh, as far as we are concerned on the NATO side, we want to change the trend line. We want to make it clear that not only the alliance is strong, that it will defend itself, that it will not be intimidated, but that it is also pursuing peace. And uh, if I were to tell you, for instance, that the President uh, agrees that there, we shouldn't seek military superiority in NATO, we should seek a balance that we do not think that a nuclear war can be won, that we think that the ideal would be to see an end to all nuclear arms. It might come as news, at least to some of the press in Canada, because we haven't been hearing that. But this is what the President said at the Diet in Japan, and this is what our foreign ministers have said just a few days ago in Brussels that we respect each other's legitimate security interests. Whether this is news or not, I don't know, but this, at least in perception, is a complete change of a trend line which I saw when I embarked on my initiative several months ago as one which was going downwards rather than upwards which was, to use Carrington's phrase, which was um, characterized by megaphone diplomacy. In Brussels last week, there was no megaphone diplomacy. There was a call for dialogue repeated two or three times in the message and in the communique. So I'm grateful, not that I've not that I've said anything new this morning, but I'm grateful that I was able to hear from the President of the United States, the leader of the Alliance, that these are not just words, that these correspond to the intention of the Alliance, and uh, that the other side can know, the Warsaw Pact can know, that we're not trying to be superior, we're not trying to not recognize their legitimate security interests. We just want them to realize we want to be at least equal and balanced and that they should recognize ours. And I think this is a great step forward. I'll say nothing, though I, maybe I will say something, about, about, uh, about the decision of NATO to send 
foreign ministers to Stockholm. This is really stating that the politicians are taking hold of the peace issue. It is no longer for the nuclear accountants. It is for the political leaders themselves. En français? Maybe you can go wrong. Or, or, well, en français, en deux mots. Je pense que vous avez entendu ce que j'ai dit. J'ai en réalité cité les, les déclarations de Bruxelles, des ministres des Affaires étrangères, les paroles du président comme quoi il ne voulait pas euh, qu'il y ait de guerre nucléaire et il ne, voulait, il ne croyait pas qu'une guerre nucléaire puisse être gagnée. Ce sont des déclarations importantes, ce sont une confirmation de l'intention des hommes politiques de se saisir des problèmes de la paix et de les poursuivre. Voilà. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Prime Minister, Mr. President, why, why Mr. Prime you Minister did you discuss your minutes? Pentagon pipsqueak critics with the President? Yeah, third, third rate and third level pipsqueaks. You say that I'm not allowed to talk about peace because somehow we haven't uh, pulled our way in NATO. That is baloney. Mr. Prime Minister, how come the President won't participate in your five-power conference? <laughs> Equal time, Secretary Weinberger, equal time. Mr. President, why, why won't you go to the talks that he has suggested? Apparently, there is nothing, there is nothing about that that has been agreed to by the So why don't you take the lead? Nice man, isn't he? Huh? Nice man. Yes. Yeah. I just expressed my joy that but he not faced with the problem of uh, He said he had pipsqueak critics, sir, in the Pentagon. <laughs> okay, what's going on over there, Mr. Secretary? <laughs> we haven't convinced him that we've gotten rid of all of those. Mr. President, why shouldn't we lead the way to peace talks? All right. I think we're embarked on a that path. Thank you.